He's too much fun. Oh, right, Max? He's gonna see this when he's like 18. <laughs> he what? He's gonna, he's gonna see these videos when he's 18 and I'm all grizzled and retired. So his girlfriend. This is what my dad used to say about me when I was six. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we got a request, which I think is a very valid request. We just did a lot of seat of the pants estimations. And I think we got some good, some good back of the envelope skills. Back of the envelope is a phrase that my friend Kevin Grove taught me. Um, he's, a, he's an engineer. And he says one of the most important things when you're setting up experiments is being able to do back of the envelope or envelope calculations. And the phrase being from you've got either a stack of mail or you've got your, 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 your little folders that things come in and you, and you place your work and somebody's sitting down talking, well, we need to get some stuff for this particular process we're building and they grab whatever's on the desk, turn it over, start writing on it, doing real quick, real quick calculations back on the back of the envelope, so to speak. Um, one of the most famous ones I've ever heard of was a, a physicist named Enrico Fermi. Anybody ever heard Enrico Fermi? Maybe nobody, okay. You've heard of the atomic bomb, <laughs> the Manhattan Project, maybe. You've heard of the atomic bomb. Okay. So when they were testing, when they were testing the detonations of the atomic bomb, they wanted to think a comparison to how strong the explosion was. And this was, I think, this was down in like the deserts of Nevada, or New Mexico. I forget where exactly they were. They were blowing these up, Arizona. Um, but for me, he took a handful of paper. He took a piece of paper, tore it up in little tiny pieces, and at the moment of detonation, he threw it in the air, and he watched how far back they went due to the blowback. And some really quick calculations in his head was able to calculate the number of tens of thousands of sticks of dynamite that that explosion was equivalent to. And it's kind of staggering, but he was pretty much dead on. I mean, within, within say, 10% of what actually had happened. That's phenomenal. That's what I aspire to be as an estimator, <laughs> to be able to do something like that. Um, but that's not where we need to be right now, or even where we need to be at the end of 105. Good. That's kind of like a target to shoot for. <laughs> we want to get ballparks. I'm, I'm excited about, about this. Even though we overestimated the height by, by 10%, that's 10%, that's not 50%. We didn't say it was one, we got the 1.8 feet and realized something was wrong with that and we reevaluated our estimates. So I'm happy about all those things. You should be too, yay. So let's build off of that. We now know, we now know, we're gonna make a little column over here called the no column, that the ceiling is nine feet tall. Here's the next estimation. Here's the next estimation. I want us to estimate the volume of air in this room. I want us to estimate the volume of air in this room. Estimate the volume of air in this room. How much air? Why would I even care about this? Might want to heat it, not just this room, but the other rooms in the building. And that costs money, so that's not how much turnover we have to have. Not just heat, Benji, what else? Uh, is the room empty? Are we counting like, volume? Assume that air is a compressible gas, which it is. So assume the room is empty. Yes, this is a very, very good question. Assume the room, so assume we're not in it when you make the calculation, because we do move the, move the air around when we get into it. So assume, for sake of argument, the room is empty. Good, let's put that assumption, assume, an empty room. For sake of argument. For sake of argument. Good. What else? What other questions do you have before you start launching into this? What do you think? What do you well, think? We've, got light, uh, we've got length, height, and width. Okay. What are you using right there? Well, right now we know that the height is nine foot. That that we know. Good. But then we have to know how many walls. Okay. Hold that thought. I hear length width and height over here. What's she doing? What's she doing? The area. Good. The volume, volume. technically. Volume. The area would be two of those, right? The area would be two of those. So you got the volume. So we have to also know some kind of a volume calculation. Now volume is something I like to use a lot. Uh, you have to use it quite a bit. We have to use it with Max in the hot tub example. I had to use it with Max in building his, his uh, tadpole pond. We have to use it. We're answering this question right here. What is the big idea with volume? And Shelly hit upon it. It's something times something times something, basically. What are those, what are those somethings? Length, mm -hmm. length and height. It's length times width times height. But we're making an assumption about 
the shape that we are finding the volume of, aren't we? Mm -hmm. What are we assuming? That it's Q. And that's Better David. Right no. no. That's Alan. Alan, that's right. I knew that. What's your last name, Alan? Moore. See, I'm David Moore. I'm putting the statistician's first name on your last name. Yes, we're assuming that the room is a box. What we do length times width times height. There are different formulas for different volumes. A cube would just be edge, edge cubed. A sphere would be 4 thirds pi r cubed. There's all kinds of different formulas for volumes. But this is box-ish. I love this room because it's not really box-ish. It's actually kind of goofily not box-ish. But we'll come back to that too. We'll estimate that as well. So we're assuming a rectangular prism. <laughs> Hell of that. We're assuming a box. There. Rectangular prism. Go on a box. Please, Benji. Yeah. Um, well, I've seen here's a box quadrant, mm -hmm. here's a box quadrant, mm -hmm. and here's like a pentangular quadrant. Oh, pentangular, I'm looking for today. Oh. Rectangular prism, pentangular, aka box. Yes, I like this very much. I like this very much. So, next thing we have to deal with, friends, how do we deal with this room? It's not a box. It's box-ish. How is it, how is this room box-ish? Okay, so we got we got a 90 degree angle over here, so that's yay. 90 over there. But this annoying thing right here is kind of a, kind of an act. Good, hold that thought, Linda, please. We're going back to that. We got a 90 over there behind. Tell me your name again. Raquel. Raquel. Raquel, thank you. And then we got this pain in the ass up here. This, am I recording this? Good. I heard pain in the ass. So how are we going to deal? Basically, our floor plan. Let's draw the floor plan. I like this idea of keeping notes. So our floor plan. is essentially, and let's try to get this roughly to scale. Let's see, we'll do uh, back at the top. So we've got, that's a little bit longer than that. <coughs> How's that, is that fairly accurate? No, it's not actually. This needs to be shorter. You guys can get up and look. You come up and see if that looks relatively-ish like the back wall dimensions. Me. How's that look as far as a ballpark? Okay, so some of you may have to come up here and take a look back to make sure. I'm, I want to make sure I'm drawing that. Too long on the left side. No. Left side's too long? Yeah. yeah. Left side's too long? Okay, you tell me when to stop. About there. About there? Okay, I'll, I'll look at that. How about the uh, this side versus this? These? Decent, yes, decent. Ish. I kind of, I'm kind of, what I'm trying to do here is I'm pretending that's a cube, which is not exactly a cube. It's not exactly the same length, the width, like a little bit wider. But I'm imagining that side falling down and then seeing how many of them would lay across the back. Does that make sense? So in other words, like take that side and swing it and then see how many of my arms would go. And I'm guessing this is about three, maybe three and a half, four of them. So I think I hopefully represented that fairly well. So. Ish. See what I'm getting at? You can disagree with me too. Please feel free to get back and forth. Yeah? Okay. Let's do the sidewall over here next. I'm going to guess. Wow. Oh. Yay. What do you think scale wise? Scale wise ish. Um, <laughs> I think that the back wall is longer than. Uh, that? Is longer than this. Yeah, yeah. You made them equal. Yeah, you made them about equal. I think that's longer than that. I think that's. A, and this is where you have to kind of stand up, maybe look around. I'm, I'm looking at a different vantage point, and I, I encourage disagreement. We're, we're trying to. I'm just trying to ballpark right now. So make sure it's not heinous. That's about equal to that. And then I'm tagging approximately 50% onto that. So what do you think? What do you think? You guys still think that? You think this is shorter than that? This one's shorter than that one? Yeah. This is shorter. Yeah. This, that is shorter than this. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but this is definitely shorter. Oh, no, no. I, totally. Andrew, I agree with you there. Th their, their concern is that wall over there. It's just yeah, shorter no, than that. The whole yeah. wall in total, including the box. Yeah, oh, including the box. No, from here to here. Yes. It's longer just, than from there to there. OK, so you're saying yeah, this. You're saying this. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Hang on. Let's just, let's just get relatively happy. Ish happy. Maybe, maybe a little less. Maybe this. Yeah. Maybe that. Okay. Now, 
Wait, Go ahead. What side is what side? Well, that's the back. I know. Of so the that two, of the two halves. That's there. Okay, that side. This side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're. I think we're doing okay. I'm, I'm looking like a top-down view now. Okay. Now let's come across the front, shall we? Looks like we go straight until we get a little bit past that corner. How about here? Is that decent? Yeah, that's right. That's not straight. You're going uphill. That's What's that? You're going uphill. Ish. Ish. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna use this as a blueprint to build off of. I'm gonna okay. use it to throw some numbers on top of. Just try to get rough scale. Rough scale. Okay. But so far. And then we've got to bring this wall down. And once I bring this wall down far enough, the last piece slides into place, doesn't it? And based on what it looks like, I'm going to guess this comes to about here-ish. What do you think? Is that a little bit more? I'm trying to use that wall as a, I'll go with you guys. A little bit more. How's that? Good? All right. And then we can just slap that off there. There we go. There's our floor plan. The back wall-ish. And I know I'm not building blueprints off of this. I wouldn't be doing this in a computer if I had to build a building off of this. I'm trying to do is get a, a rough ballpark estimate of how much air is actually in this room. So how are we going to apply the idea that we have to concern ourselves with, which is we've got this problem here and this problem here? I would make that a triangle. You would make what a triangle? That area right there. Yeah. And then it's where the rest of it. Or yeah. where the so you're, go ahead. Show me, please. And you know what? Do it in a different color. That one will stand out. That'd be even better. Grab any color you want up there, Lynn. That's perfect. One of these? Yeah. Go for it. Uh huh. It's thinking the same thing. Makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like that. And now we, of course, we have like a hexagon thing. Please. Joe. Joe, thank you. I was, I was actually thinking that's where the triangle was going to go originally, was to bring it down here. And my next question was, if I like this idea. This is great, too. I'm not saying there's one right way to do it. How does this compare to that? So, you see what I'm saying here, friends? How does this space compare to that space? So I'm going to put that in red. That space and that space right there. How do they compare? Ish. Now, you can take a look at our drawing, but also take a look at the reality of the room that we're in. What do you think? As far as how much, assuming they're the same height, which I think we can assume they're both nine feet. Yeah. How is the amount of air contained in that kind of block there compared to the amount of air contained in this block, <laughs> triangular block over here? What do you think? A little bit less? How much less? 30% less, 30% less. How much less? Or, or who says who says more? Who says they're about the same? The triangle's like twice as big as the... Twice as big in what way? Uh, of the empty space of the red... Oh, color. I agree with this, with this diagram. But also look at the reality of that shape versus this shape. Realizing that that's a pretty shallow triangle, which means that that height that's going this way might be... It might be about the same this way as this one is deep. So, so we're saying this triangle here is, I think I'm hearing a slight consensus. This triangle here has got a little more space in it than this square here. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do this. Estimate. <coughs> let's take that away. Okay? See what I'm doing? I'm taking that away. Pretend that as if it's not. Let me, let me draw it back in just in red so we know it's. Okay. So here's space. Here's space that we give back to the room. We have to give that space back to the room. Now, the problem with doing that is now there's too much air in the room. I hope that, that makes sense. So now we have to take some space away from the room to balance that. Where do you think we should do that? I, the triangle's the problem, isn't it? <clears throat> the triangle's the issue. Let's take some space away from that triangle. So here, I'll turn this around to you guys. How much of the triangle should we take away from the room? Judging by what you guys are saying, I'm hearing here like about a half, more than half. Over here, Andrew's saying there was 30% more air in the triangle. 
So I'm gonna tell you what, Andrew, you, you guide me. You guys guide me. I wanna give some of this, take some of this away from the room. So basically I'm gonna color this in, if you will, to, to, to take take that air away. How start from the other side. We, we, we could, it doesn't matter how we how we start, we're gonna have to deal with a weird shape at the end. How far in should we come? Let's, let's take this away for a second. There's about half right there. <coughs> that puts just about as much air here as here. So should we go a little bit further than half? Yeah. Maybe about, about here-ish? Yeah. Okay. So now, let's take that away. Okay, and let's, what color should we make that? <laughs> Blue. Space. <coughs> Taken. Away. From the room. Does what I'm doing make sense as far as trading space? Trading space. I'm putting, I'm getting rid of that annoyance there. And if I'm getting rid of that annoyance, that means I'm creating more, more air that actually wasn't in the room. That means I have to take air away from the room that's already there. So in other words, I have to bring this wall. If I take that wall away, I've got to essentially bring, build the wall here and then brick it off here and then leave this space in a hallway or somewhere else. I'm maintaining an estimate of the, of the air in the room by creating more logical shapes. Is, is that okay? Is that fair? Okay, good, good. Why do I like this? How is this better than what it just was? There's way fewer angular pieces. See, Shelly, about 20 minutes ago, you gave us a beautiful formula. Length times width times height. Length times width, times height. And I wanted to use length and width and height, but the problem with that was I didn't want to have to adjust that for some weird shape. We are now close to having actual rectangular shapes that I can calculate the volume of. See, this was given back to the room, so technically it's there now. It's technically there now. So I see a rectangle. I see a rectangle right here, right there. There's a rectangle. Okay, good so far? I also see a rectangle right here. And that's beautiful. I now have two rectangles, which means I can calculate the area of those two rectangles, multiply it by the nine, we got ourselves a volume. What's on your mind, Crystal? Yeah, but what about that space though right there? What about this little guy right here? Yeah. What about him? What, do, what am I gonna call this? Are you <laughs> I, well, sure, but as far as what kind of shape, what kind of shape is that, first of all? It is a trapezoid. It is a trapezoid. But here's where the back of the envelope calculation is going to come in, friends. Here is the, is the goofy little piece. Here's the goofy little piece, right? If I was to bring that out to where that wall I just had to build was, and then go like this and then bring it in, if I swung that out like that, I am going to create more air. A lot more air, kind of a little more air, even multiplied by nine feet, not a whole lot of air. So guess what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend it's a rectangle. I'm going to ignore the fact that it's, that it's, that it's curved. I'm going to pretend it's a rectangle. Estimate. Estimate, not exact. Estimate. I'm going to estimate that it's a rectangle. You guys, go. Work together right now. Give me some measurements. Walk around the room. I heard some great ideas about how to measure these things. Some of you guys were counting the holes in the concrete, right? You can't use my tape measure. I'm gonna actually measure the damn thing in my office hours today after my office hours, but I'm gonna measure it and get down to the nearest, hopefully, cubic foot or two, that, how much air is actually in this room. But I want estimates. Who's got a, uh, 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 what is it, 12? Where's the 12, what do you got? You can count off. Tw tw say that you know, again. Oh, you're doing paces. Paces are great. Paces are great. Count a pace, you have to know how big your pace is, though. Anybody wear a 12? Oh, size 12 shoe? Yeah. Oh, so you're going with the, is that what a size 12 is? 12 inches? Yeah. I got size 12. I got size 12. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. I was going to go by it. Yeah, you can use a pace. Use a pace. Figure out how big that is. Give me some estimates. Give me some estimates. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did we cut out them going Go, go, Crystal. Didn't we cut out them with that? Well, the, what, what is up there now is what oh, we kind of tentatively... I'm looking at my stuff upside down. It's okay. Yeah, 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 it's okay. Y
okay. That's okay. That's okay. We tentatively, if you will, agree that that's where to find the bond area. Once we have that area, we will squirt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're gonna bring it back because they start over here, right? Yeah, 16 right there. Just count from there. Three, twenty-four. I counted twenty-four. Is that what you guys counted? Oh, people are using tiles. Very smart. Yeah. Very smart. Using the tiles. Okay, so you got twenty-four on that wall. Twenty-four on that wall. Okay. I can't remember twenty-four. 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 Twenty-five. Some people are getting twenty-four. What I call twenty-five is easy to do the math on it. Does that make sense? All right. Twenty-five. Twenty-five is easy to do. Twenty-five squared. That's just twenty-five. You go from there. I think I got like thirty-six and a half. That's what I was thinking too. I was thinking thirty-six. Call thirty-five is easy to do the math. If you're using your calculator, it doesn't matter. Go with, go with your go with your estimates. These are good. As I wander. Can you write them? I'm sorry. What's the matter? Look at the circle. Twenty-four. Okay. And then thirty-five and a half. So thirty-five. But then we stop here at this one and go from here to there. Twenty-five. I've always been across here and then across here. We're going to. I want to. I want to see what you're getting different responses. I want to add your measurements. We're going to start from the front. So we're going to get a low ball and a high ball. We're going to see how far that reaches. Actually, on this one. And then I'm going to measure later. This one against this wall right here was 24. I think we're going to trust you guys. I think you got a better estimate than I am. Then all the way across, we get 30, 35 and a half, 36 and a half. We'll hold it back. I'm going to get 10. Aren't we cutting out the halves and just do 36? I think. Okay. So make the ceiling 10 so, and put it at So we've got this right here, but then we need this long one to be here. Yeah, we need to go from there. They are sped up, but it's 3 or 20 feet probably. So John, we need to go from here to here. And it's hard, and that's biased. We're using the ceiling. So that's half wall. Yeah, 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 that's
Yes. Precise but not accurate. Very well said, Andrew. Did anybody use, somebody over here, was, it might have been Andrew mentioned the holes in the wall back there. Did anybody use those? There's those, like, there's those, the, the form holes that are drilled in. Did anybody use those? No? No? Okay. I was just curious. I heard somebody, I wouldn't have thought to do that because I, I would probably either overestimate the holes. I was going to guess those are, those are more than, more like two and a half feet to three feet. So I would go, I don't know what those are from. Um, and look, here they lay out a sheet of plywood and then poured the concrete behind it, but you can kind of see where the, the lines are. And that comes in handy because a sheet of plywood is four by eight. So you can use that as a sheet of plywood. So what you guys are doing is you're using these visuals of your paces or the tiles or lumber and known dimensions. Ariel had a really cool idea. I'm going to embarrass you here. I hope she doesn't write. <laughs> Did anybody else think of this? I think it's kind of slick. The way I've drawn it might lead you to think that you have to actually calculate three individual rectangles and add them together. Did anybody think of it as... One big rectangle and then take out the small piece. Yes. Uh, wow. that, 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 totally valid, right? Totally valid? Joe. 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 Thank you, Joe. Yeah, totally valid. Don't forget your old geometry from high school. Although you're trying to. I know you're trying very hard to. Of course. Or just do, for, bring that guy into this one and do two rectangles. I, I'm not saying one way is easier, better, or more correct than the other. Because once we settle on a set of measurements, we all get the same numbers, right? As soon as we settle on dimensions, we're going to do the calculations and get ourselves an area and multiply it by nine and call it and call it done. Does that make sense? Something else to consider. Something else to consider. Remember how we overestimated the height of the room at ten feet. Remember that. We could underestimate the rest of the room and let the overestimated height balance out the underestimated inside. Does that make sense? You see what I just said? I'm going to say it again, make sure that makes sense. We overestimated as a class 10 foot ceilings when they were actually 9 foot ceilings. I think, especially because you guys are doing a fantastic job of getting these dimensions, we're going to use that 9 feet because we apparently worked very hard to get it. But supposing we didn't slap up, me and Shelly didn't slap up the tape measure and get 9 feet, supposing we still think it was 10. So we, in our minds, maybe we think we overestimated it. We can go with an underestimated room area multiplied by an overestimated height, and hopefully in the wash we get a decent estimate. I bring this up because of the kind of sort of heated discussion we had with that space versus this space. Remember that discussion where we were arguing about how many of those fit in this? Remember that? We could just say, to hell with it, they're equal. That equals that. Now we know that's not true, at least we think that's not true, because you guys were mostly saying that this, this here is bigger than that rectangle back there. And I'll check that too later. I'm going to go with the tape and I'll measure all this stuff out. But if you say they're equal, even though in our minds we think this is, this, this is bigger, we've then underestimated the inside of the room, multiplying by an overestimated height, maybe we get even closer. I'll run that estimate later when I come down with the, with the measurements. I'll run the estimate before I do it. You see what I'm getting at there? Kind of like a plus or minus. Ah, it was a little bit too high here, a little bit too low here. It's all in the wash. Stick your head in the oven and your feet in the fridge. You're fine. Kind of that kind of thing. Ish. Are we ready to share some estimates for lengths and widths? We got ourselves a nice height. We got a nice height. Okay. Let's go with some estimates. So I think we only need three measures really. We need this. Well, I'm doing three, four. We need this, 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 and this. So I saw a bunch of folks walking across the middle. Were you guys basically essentially getting this distance back here? Yeah. yeah. Let me hear some estimates that you guys got. 36, 36 feet. Give me some other ones. 36 and a half. 36 and a half. Give me some other ones. 35. 35. Give me some other ones. 30. 30. Give me some other ones if we have them. 32. Just, just, I, I'm just getting I'm, laundry list 32, laundry list of estimates for this back wall for right now. Anybody else want to share? We got 36. 36 as well. Good. Good. We're not going to do the averaging for this for this one. Um, we can, but what I'd rather do is start introducing you guys to the idea of something called a confidence interval. And we'll come back to that momentarily. So it looks like to me, the highest we got was 36 and a half. The lowest we got was 30. Let's call it 30 to 40. 
How's that sound? Does that sound too good or do you think that's too much of an overestimate? That's too much of an overestimate. How about 30 to 35? Yeah, yeah. 30 to 35? There it is. We'll call this from 30 feet to 35 feet. What we're going to do is we're going to do two different calculations, an under and an over, and we're going to hopefully that the true value is trapped somewhere in between. So hopefully we are now. Andrew brought up a very, very interesting point. Uh, there's two terms in measurement, accuracy and precision. Accuracy and precision. If we were assuming these tiles were 12 by 12 when they were essentially 10 by 10, and we based very, very specific calculations on the wrong number 12 by 12, we would have a very precise answer, which means it would be very, very close to the true answer if these actually were 12 by 12. But it would be off the mark pretty, pretty far, wouldn't it? So that's a very precise, inaccurate answer. Basically, it would be scaled. It would be, right, scaled by two dimensions because we'd have it length and width. If we go 30 to 35 and we feel pretty good about this being below the true and this being above the true, then we're going to have a pretty wide range of values, which doesn't have much precision, but hopefully it's targeted the actual volume, which makes it accurate. Does that make sense, the difference between accuracy and precision? So good. We're shooting. With estimates, I like to shoot for accuracy. I'm OK with a wide precision. If I need more precision, I get the tape measures out. That's kind of why we have tape measures. Kirsten, wait, Kirsten. Tori, you were going to say something about two minutes ago. So maybe you were right. Maybe we should be doing 30 and 40. What I'm keeping track of in my mind is, I'm keeping track of in my mind, we're going to have errors all on every one of these measurements. If you guys think knocking it down to 35 is okay, that's okay. So let's come back to it. We'll come back. The only reason I was saying 40 was like, ah, 36 and a half, 40, whatever. Right. That's a little cavalier. A little cavalier. That's three and a half feet. Multiplied over nine feet is almost 30 square feet. And that's, that's a sizable chunk as soon as you start applying another error, error build one here. I'm tempted to agree with you guys. Go ahead, Benji. Yeah, I got 36. Okay, 35 is an underestimate for you. Yeah. But remember, we've got we've got three more measurements we have to deal with. Right. right. Let's 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 just let it all wash together. Let's let it wash together, shall we? Okay. How about this wall here? What do we got? Twenty-four. 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 We like twenty-four. Twenty-four. We like twenty-four. All right. Hang on. I heard one person say twenty-five. Twenty-five. I like twenty-five better. I like twenty-five. I like 25. I like 25. I like 25. I'm just because it's easier to do the math on. So we'll say 24 to 25. You got it. That's amazing. Can I ask? Can I ask? Why so certain on the 24 and or the 25? Micah? These are two by four ceiling tiles, and that's exactly six. Ha-ha! Clever. -ha! <laughs> 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 I never once looked up. I never once looked up. Never once looked up. You've got a sheet of plywood right here. Boom, 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 boom. You got a sheet of plywood in four of those tiles. Clever, very nice, sir, very nice. I mean, who else thought of that? I sure as hell didn't. So that was just Mike, and who else said 24 and why? I counted. Good, well hell, we can also go that way, can't we, to get the length? Can't we also go that way to get an estimate? Because if, if we know they're two feet across, Assuming that's a half a tile over there. So that we're not bad. We're not bad. Assuming that, and, and we're also not allowing for the little spacer in between, which I'm, I'm assuming is negligible. We should go 35 to 40. Well, this, this brings back up to 40. It was used to 40. I'm going to leave it as it is right now. Because without Micah's noticing those ceiling tiles, I, I sure as hell didn't notice them. Well, we're also adding in a little bit of extra space. We are. We are. There's all kinds of wiggle happening with estimation. There's all kinds of little. I was, I was, I was, I was bemoaning to these guys of all the classrooms I could have taught Math 105 in. They gave me the weirdest shaped one on campus. If this was just a rectangle, it would be so much easier, right? But all these little tiny inconsistencies, you're going to overestimate in some places and underestimate in others. So, how about speaking of which, what do we get for this? I got 20.25. So I had 20.25. So we'll call that 20 if that's okay. Okay. 27. What else we got? This, this is this dimension here. I hear 20, I hear 27, 23, 24, 23 and a half. So we're getting in there 20, 24. Who'd you do 20 to 25? 20 to 25? Yeah. Good. This should feel weird. <laughs> Chris, like I tell you, she's like, she's like, I just want to solve for X now. It's like, it's amazing. You have algebra class. I'm done solving for X. No, you're 